Hey guys, uh, quick and emphasis on dirty unboxing video and a brief overview of this Jingsha Chinese mining motherboard. Um, as you can tell, a normal motherboard box cuts off right around here, but this has the ability to directly support eight two-slot GPUs on it. And I bought it to kind of test with that a little bit, but mainly just because I'm so fascinated. Uh, it has a built-in, I believe, third-gen core series based Celeron mobile processor with some graphics. It has a DDR3 sodium slot and like I said 8 by 16 by 1 PCIe Gen 2 slots. So let me take it out of the packaging we'll quickly give it an overview um, and we'll kind of go over the goods and the bads. So here's a better look at the board. It does have a typical front panel connector way up at the top here. There is an auto on jumper which is actually kind of a nice thing to see uh, for you know mining applications which you may or may not actually want this for um, you probably do right now but I mean the future when mining is kaput there's going to be a ton of these and I think that's really going to be when they become interesting because it looks to have really good legacy support and these are only about $100 shipped with CPU and graphics so again a single DDR3 SODIMM slot 24 pin ATX power um, the components look, you know, of decent enough quality. We've got solid capacitors all throughout. Ah, remove seal after washing. They didn't do that. It does have a 2242 MSATA only M.2 slot for storage, as well as two SATA, uh, oh, I'm guessing those are three gigabits per second, but they might be 150 meg. Doesn't matter either way. Um, and then since you don't use something like a riser for this, it does have supplemental PCIe power for absolutely everything. And it has several fan headers too, which is actually a really nice touch. A lot of motherboards just don't have those. You will have to supply your own CR2032. And this is definitely four layers or less uh, for a PCB. It is not confidence inspiring. Uh, with the SAG on this side, I don't know. Power switch, okay, it says on the board. I was gonna say, is that reset CMOS? Is that reset? Is that power? That is power. Uh, for the onboard graphics, we have a single D sub 15 pin VGA and an HDMI, which is again great to see. Four USB 2.0 ports. I do not see a provision anywhere on it for a front USB header, so you are indeed limited to four unless you put. Oh, I'm wrong. There are two front USB headers, so you have eight total. That's actually kind of impressive. And again, this will make it much nicer for future use after coin mining kind of stops. And I'm hoping that this will be more useful as an overview for people looking to pick these up for retro gaming or something like that than it will be, um, or even a file server, honestly, than it will be for um, mining itself. You could potentially run a bunch of hard drive controllers in this. I mean, you could run probably, oh gosh, I don't know, eight on each one of these. I mean, you could run probably 100 drives on this um, with NAS software without too much issue. You might run into some bandwidth issues, but I really doubt it, especially for most applications. Uh, it does have gigabit Ethernet. Looks like it's real tech, judging by that. There's no onboard sound, no nothing you don't need. Um, the motherboard mounting holes do look to be standard ATX on the top. Uh, micro ATX down to here, and then from here down, obviously, like nothing else. I believe these are actually designed to work in a pretty standard 8-slot GPU mining enclosure, but I don't know for sure. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a, a couple of drives to it, put a CMOS battery in it, put some RAM in it. I do have an 8 gigabyte uh, DDR3 sodium just sitting around, so way better RAM than this thing deserves, but that just slips right in like that. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the specs. So for the purpose of this test, um, I'm putting in just random devices. I'm gonna try to power it on. I've got like an old Radeon HD 50 something, some 2600 XTs, three 10 gig NICs, and a 4870, I think. Uh, I will probably have to hook in PCI power. I don't believe any of those devices will get power without that being hooked in. So I gotta look for a few more adapters. Um, if I don't have enough, I'll probably pare this down a little bit, but that's the idea. So I super jankily plugged in a lot of PCIe power connectors with two power supplies and then a bit of that computer over there too. Um, booted right onto the flash drive for Windows 10, so UEFI works just fine. 
I'm gonna quick throw an OS on it and just see if all this stuff gets detected. Well, I've got it into Windows 10 and everything looks great. It's detecting four ethernet cards. One of those is the built-in gigabit and then it's detecting five graphics adapters. Uh, one is the built-in I'm using and then I've got just four random other cards too and then one empty slot. So it seems like it plays nice with older legacy devices just fine. Um, I'll have to try it with a newer card. I just don't have anything handy right here. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm going to let it do a bunch of Windows updates. <laughs> and then uh, maybe I'll run some benchmarks on it just to see how godforsaken slow that CPU is. But honestly, this board's pretty cool. And for 100 bucks, it's hard to ignore. I mean, I bought it for fun. And I don't actually know how it's going to do for mining. I think if you were planning to use this for Ethereum, you'd have a big problem because it only has one RAM slot. And the biggest easily available SODIMM is 8 gigs. And I think the rule of thumb is you have to have half as much system RAM as you do uh, graphics VRAM. So if you had a bunch of 6 gig cards, I think that would still limit you to, well, I don't know, I'm bad at math, but just a few, probably like 3 or 4. Um, and if you're doing it with like a 30 series card or a RX 6000, probably just one. So I think this board is a little behind the times, but it's probably great for altcoins. They don't all require that same... Uh, amount of RAM to function properly. I think it involves just having to store the, the blockchain somewhere on the machine. So either way, um, like I said, I'm going to let it update and we'll come back to it. But overall, pretty cool. Um, and it looks like there's nothing critical in the board itself. So if you bought one of these several years from now when mining's obsolete, you could just probably take a Dremel to it and cut straight through it and still have a functional motherboard that fits in a regular case with a built-in dual-core uh, CPU that has, you know, the modern instruction sets that you really care about, um, and enough I.O., but also, um, I'm guessing you could run Windows XP on this because VGA and USB 2, so that'd be a fun experiment to try if I have time. It would for sure run Windows 7 because that's around the same time as that hardware, but I think a Windows XP-based uh, retro system could be really cool with this, especially considering you're limited to basically two gigs of RAM with that, and those SODIMs are basically free. So um, combine that with a, albeit SATA, M.2 slot, it's kind of a nice little addition. No EPS requirement at all. It's just a 24 pin and then supplemental for whatever PCIe um, you want to run. But again, it's cool. For a hundred bucks, I'm glad to see that it works right out of the box. And yeah, it seems to detect everything just fine whether it's gpu or otherwise so this could be a like i said a really good nas board if you wanted to do a homebrew uh, true nas or uh unraid i think this this might be kind of cool if you had a really huge number of drives so sit rep the board sucks for ethereum don't use it for ethereum for alts it seems like it works fine but the system ram limitation is big so these can all run Kapow or Grin32 or whatever, but these benchmarks, um, the big ones, Dagger Hashimoto, what you use for the most profitability right now, it just, it won't work, unfortunately. You could run one of these 8 gig uh, 580s and it would work, but you can't do two. So it's a cool board, but you're probably best off, honestly, buying it for either just spacing out older GPUs to run altcoins in the background if you don't care about power, excuse me, or cutting the board down and using it as like a really low power, maybe like media center PC or a retro, retro gaming computer. Again, with the VGA output, that's kind of cool. IO is limiting, but not that bad. And again, for the price, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's hardly more than a set of risers. So food for thought, but again, I figured I'd post something because nobody's really listed anything about these motherboards anywhere else. So they do work, but unless you can somehow cram like a 32 gig sodium in there, which I don't think exists, probably a pass if you're doing Ethereum. Just fine for altcoins though.